On Friday night show, uh, Chris Hayes was here, for which I'm very grateful. I was in L.A. uh, uh, being on the Bill Maher show, and I know Chris was here very ably helming this desk. One of the things that Chris talked about on Friday night show was the appearance at CPAC this year of the last Republican nominee for president, Mitt Romney. Chris talked about how uh, Mr. Romney expressed defiant optimism about the future of conservative politics and the Republican Party. But the thing that struck me the most about Mitt Romney's speech which was his first major public appearance since losing the presidency, was the part at the very end of his speech where he talked about the Iraq war. He described the Iraq war as a war of liberation. We fought the Iraq war to liberate the Iraqi people from tyranny. You know what? Actually, the Iraq war was supposedly to go get Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction and the nuclear weapons that he was going to set off. We're going into that war to stop him from giving those nuclear weapons and those biological and chemical weapons that he supposedly had to stop him from giving those weapons that, to the terrorists that they told us he was working with in al-Qaeda. That's why they told us we had to go to war in Iraq. That's what they told us about why we had to have that war. And none of it was true. Ten years ago this week, when we invaded Iraq, we were told that it was all about 9-11. That if we didn't go invade Iraq that the next attack on us by the same people who attacked us before would be a nuclear attack. A chemical weapons attack, a biological weapons attack, or a nuclear attack. The smoking gun would be a mushroom cloud. And that was not true. There was no nuclear program. There was no weapons of mass destruction. There was no relationship between the Iraqi government and the people who attacked us on 9-11. And and yet, there's the Republican presidential nominee, the last one to run, saying, actually, the Iraq war was a war of liberation. At the Republican convention this year, when they picked that presidential nominee, the foreign policy speech was given by the person who was national security advisor during the Iraq war, the one who said the smoking gun would be a mushroom cloud, who described that war in her speech that night at the convention as a hard, hard decision that kept us from being attacked again the way we were on 9-11. I mean, 10 years in, it is very hard to get right with, to come to terms with the fact that we went to war based on something that our government told us, that our president told us that was not true. There is nothing that can be done about that decision that will bring back the 115,000 Iraqi civilians who died in that war, the more than 4,400 American troops who died in that war, the more than 30,000 Americans who were wounded in that war will not be made whole by anything that we can do now. We cannot bring them back. We cannot heal their injuries retroactively. And George Bush and Dick Cheney and Condoleezza Rice and all the rest of them are still around. You know, I don't know what justice would look like for them at this point. But, but in terms of how we get right with this as a country, the accountability can't just be personal about the decision makers. It has to be about telling the story honestly of what happened so that they, like Nixon, don't get away with it in the long run the way they got away with it in the short run. So that we tell the story correctly and honestly so that it doesn't happen again. So it's not dismissed as a conspiracy theory generations hence by Americans who can't believe something this evil and duplicitous would have happened in our country. It did. And to do right by what happened, we need to teach it that way and learn it that way if we want to have any hope of it not happening again. In American politics, there were plenty of Democrats who went along with the Iraq war 10 years ago, who believed it, who fell for it, who advanced it and made the lie more convincing by virtue of their Democratic endorsement. On the Democratic side, though, since... That, at least, has since become a source of shame. It's a strike against you in democratic politics, right? It's part of the reason we have a president named Barack Obama who was not part of that mess and not a president named Hillary Clinton who, frankly, was part of that mess. In the Democratic Party, people who were wrong on the Iraq war are seen as having been wrong about the Iraq war. They have had to apologize and explain why they were wrong. That vote for the Iraq war is held against them. On the Republican side, though, it's not like that. On the Republican side, Nixon still does have a secret plan to end the war. On the Republican side, Iraq was a war of liberation, if you ask them, in 2013. On the Republican side, the Iraq war is what kept us safe so we wouldn't get attacked again the way we did on 9-11, if you ask them in 2012. That smoking gun could have been a mushroom cloud. Thank God we went in. They are still there arguing that. We have been through two presidential election cycles since then. It is now 10 years after the war, and the war is over. And this is still the line at the top tier of the Republican Party, trying to sell us the same lies that got us into that war in the first place. And until the Republican Party gets right on that, the history of this will never be told honestly, because it will always be seen as a contested and partisan thing. Friends, Romans, countrymen. 
Lend me your ears. We do not give up. Expect surprises. Subscribe.